to Toronto and came back and fired up. But it kind of, you can't always hold that certain place. I almost feel like what I've got here is kind of going backwards, but it's relevant for today. Father, we thank you for your presence, first of all. Father, we pray your blessing on the word. We thank you for your blessing on what is going on in the nation today. We thank you that you are overcoming evil. And we thank you that we can be a part of it. That you are looking for people that you can show yourself strong through. And you receive the glory and not the per people, not the person. Thank you, Father. So we just moved into the month of Kislev. This is the ninth month if you go from the first uh, being Passover, first month Nisan. This is considered the month of darkness. Would you say that kind of uh, fits what's over our nation? Days are getting shorter. It basically means moving into the winter time. Uh, that's why it's considered that, but it also fits the, the actual spiritual darkness that's over the, the nation right now. The days are shorter. But what happens in the month of Kislev? What's the holidays that come up in? I mean, they're not mandated feasts, but there are things that are in Maccabees. Dedication, feast of dedication. Lights. So after the darkness, the light comes. So the, the, the Hanukkah actually goes up and goes into the next month. And the next month is, is very interesting. But, but this month is considered the month of dreams. Because most of the dreams, the, the Jacob's Ladder and, and Joseph's dream, that, that was all in, in this uh, week's Torah portion or this month's Torah portion is about all the different dreams. And uh, I may have had dreams that they really felt like God gave them dreams. You know, and obviously, you know, if he gives us a dream, we don't say, whoops, you can't do that. This is not the month of Kislev. You know, I mean, he gives us months, but it's just times when you can, you can think about it and... It's really interesting that I mean I didn't know this till last night. I don't know if Jesse ever told Scott, but Jesse had a dream, and uh, and, and this was before the election, and he said he dreamed that that uh, Trump won, and he said for some reason there was an 80 there, and he said he didn't know what that meant by uh, whatever, but then he said he and. He said, oh, wow. He said, I just read somewhere where they said he might have got 80,000 votes. 80 million. 80 million votes, I mean. So he said maybe that 80 that he saw with when he won, there was an 80 there, and he didn't know quite what the 80 was. Right. And so I don't, so I don't know if that dream was, I'm praying that that was a God dream, yeah. you know, and, and uh, not a pizza dream. There are. Sometimes, you know, you can have weird dreams. I've had them, and I've had godly dreams. So uh, I thought that was interesting. Uh, he just told us that last night. Like, like it was like, yeah, I had a dream. He won. It's like, well, why didn't you tell us before? Yeah, you know, anyway. He did? He did? Uh, we can see who he likes. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Follow the money. <laughs> That's what they say, follow the money. <laughs> Uh, so considering that in the month of darkness we celebrate light with Hanukkah, and it's also interesting that through the week of Hanukkah, the ten, what is it, nine days, ten days, whatever it is, the last two days are actually going go into the next uh, month. So it actually is in part of the next month. And uh, <coughs> so I'm praying that as we go into Hanukkah that as we come into the nation as in darkness that the light will come because prophetically it was said that uh, this will drag out until December 17th which is around the first of, of uh, Tevet of Tevet uh, so uh, which is the end of Hanukkah so it's going to be interesting to see whether the light will continue to shine in the USA or not whether the light once this comes out and where I think it's what is it, December? Is it December 12th or what is it where they have to bring in their, who they vote for? 
I think it's, I think it's in there. It's during the time of, Han of, yeah. of the light. Praise the Lord. So it's going to be the right, the right thing. Uh, so in Chuck Pierce's book on the month of Tevet, which we will be going into at that point, it says because the letter that goes with this month is Eon, uh, which represents sight, which represents seeing. I'm probably saying that. What's the, what's, what is the name of that letter? Ein? Ein. And I, I think in, in uh, Jerry's book would be, normally has a picture of an eye, if I remember right. So it's, it's uh, that that letter represents the month of Tibet. And so it's a, where your eyes will be open. And he says, let your good eye see and war with the evil eye. Break the power of the evil one during this time. So fitting with what we are fighting today. And, but the evil eye normally in the scriptures, I believe, is talking about being stingy and, and not being a giving type person. Because an, an evil or a, a good eye is a good person that gives people, and an evil eye is somebody who's stingy. Did I say that wrong the first time, I think? Uh, so it's, it's fitting with what we are fighting today. We are to break the power of the evil one. And then uh, Tevet is associated with the tribe of Dan. When we go into that, and Dan means to judge, to grow up, to mature. And uh, it could mean righteous indignation. You know, you can be angry. And sin not. Sometimes it's a little, a little hard to become angry and sin not. We know Jesus never sinned, but he went in with the straps and went in and overthrew the tables. Righteous indignation is what we call it. All right? Should have been here last Wednesday night. I think there was a whole lot of righteous indignation flowing through this place. Uh, I almost had to get up and preach some uh, peace, uh, whatever, but... So anyway, in, in his book, and the book is uh, entitled uh, A Time to Advance, and it has nothing to do with, or it's been written a while back, it wasn't here. It says that uh, it is a time to pray for our commander-in-chief uh, during that beginning of the month. So we know that the enemy will not let go without a fight. Believe that? So the title of my little speech today is oh. <laughs> why does it keep going now you know it's not fast enough for me I still have multiple tickets for this war what is it good for Absolutely a whole lot when, you, when you're warring with the Bible. I disagree with that song. We are warriors in the spirit. That's what you're here for. You're here for such a time as this. Amen? So last week Tom mentioned about the storm where Jesus was asleep in the boat. Remember that? He's talking about that. And right immediately when he said that, it's like I saw the storm. And why did the storm come? was because of where they were headed. Right. Yeah, he had a good point with what he made, but I want to take it a little bit further as to where he was going. He got in the boat. They were going to the other side. What did they do when they got to the other side? Remember where, what behind, after that, what happened on the other side? They delivered the spirit. The, the, uh, yeah, in the Gadarenes. It says, And when he was entered into the ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest, which means commotion, in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. How many people know that we can also sleep when he's in the boat with us? So we know that he got up and calmed the storm. And he said, peace be still. And then he told them, tell you, you've little faith and da, da, da. Do you think that he actually thought that they would jump up and, and speak to the storm and quiet it? Or is he just teaching them a lesson? It's like, you know, if you have, if I am with you, 
you are okay. We get all shook up because we don't realize that Jesus is sleeping in our boat. Or he's in your, your temple. He, is, he sits on the throne in here if we, if we allow him to. Sometimes we like to put ourselves in there, take him out and put him, ourselves on the throne. And then we got to dethrone ourselves again and put him back on the throne where he belongs. Now, I, I'm not, I'm not going to say that I know that, that the devils, the spirits that were in the, the, the man, the Gadarian, there in that Gennesaret. Uh, but I believe that the spirits seen them coming. And they sent that storm to stop them from coming over there because they knew when Yeshua shows up, uh, the good stuff is going to hit the fan. And so they put that out there, and Yeshua just stood up, and he says, peace be still. Quiet. Quit. And they didn't have any choice but to let go of that. Now, we know God can send storms. But I don't think God sent a storm over, over. I think it was the enemy was pushing to keep them from coming in. I've read where missionaries have said, and I think it was through Dennis Cook, I think it was when Jonas Gingrich had him here, and I'm not sure if it's in his book. I read his Dennis Cook's book. He said that missionaries, when they went into the tribes where the witch doctors and the witchcraft and all that was very strong, that the witch doctor would see the missionary coming and he would know that he was a man of God because he would see the white glow around the person. And he could, he could see that. And you don't think that those de demon spirits that were in this guy saw this light coming across the water? And the witch doctor knew that that person had more power than they did. And sometimes they get saved. Matthew 8, 28. And when he had was come to the other side into the country of the Gergesons, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce so that no man might pass that way. I mean, these guys were so bad that they, you wouldn't even walk through there. You wouldn't walk that way. You'd go way around or whatever. And you know that sometimes when there's people possessed and things like that, they got power and strength like you wouldn't believe. I mean, that's why when you do deliverance, you always want to keep your eyes open on the one you're doing deliverance to. Because you don't know what's coming. I mean, I've heard of them already taking them, throwing people across the room. That's why you got to take control of it quickly. You had to go through the storm. What do you think we're going through now? We're battling through the storm to victory in this election. It's really easy to get weary when you're reading, when you're reading the news instead of getting on God's channel, listening to, the, listening to the prophets or whatever you need to be. It's really easy to get discouraged. I mean, it's like different times I've heard stuff, and it's like I'm going, oh, man, I'm going, you know, ah, where are we at? You know, it's, it's real easy to get to get that point. So it's like your faith has to be up there. You have to believe that, that, that what God has said is what God meant. And we, we believe in the prophets and we believe God spoke through the prophets and we believe it's God speaking, not necessarily the prophets. But it, it, it can be hard. It's interesting that six hurricanes have hit Louisiana this year. Some deadly and some that did not cost any lives, but that was many more than normal. He said about every hurricane that came into the Gulf, at one time the cone had them in their sights. Six of them hit there and a couple of them uh, didn't. They were close, but they didn't. You know what they had on their ballots in the vote, in the voting? So this amendment says the state's constitution cannot be interpreted to protect the right to abortions and or require funding for abortions. So it does not ban abortion but because it can't aban they can't aban abandon abortions. But I think I have that up there. Uh, and, uh, and it passed by 65%. You, you don't think the enemy was mad about that? 
angry about that? But they do have a law in place that if Roe v. Wade is ever overturned, then abortions would be banned in Louisiana just like that. I mean, it's, it's automatic. It's already on the books for when Roe v. Wade pat, or gets taken down, uh, abortion will be banned there. I don't think there's not a fight going on. I'm not saying that the devil can make hurricanes go to here and there. There's guys out there that say that the, the deep state can guide these where I don't, be, I don't really believe they can. If they would, why don't they guide them up into where the desert is and let make the desert blow them up there? I mean, I, I know I've heard, I mean, when I was young, I heard of them seeding the clouds and things like that, trying to make it rain, but I've never heard that they really had a whole lot of success with it. Uh, anyway, uh, they might have stuff I don't know about, but anyway. Uh, but for them to pass laws like this is hurting the sacrifices that are going on of the babies, the children. Right. And so the enemy is upset because he's not receiving the blood of the sacrifice of our aborted babies and things. Ephesians 2, 2 says, We're in times past ye walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So He's talking about that, that the prince of power is, has the prince of power of the air. Uh, Jesus said that he has nothing on him because he didn't have any sin. So the prince of power of the air couldn't do anything. Hallelujah. But uh, anyway, we are at war. And sometimes Christians have to stand up and go on offense instead of always being on defense and trying to defend what they believe. We need to be on offense. And it's like I, I was thinking... You know, it's about time to move on. I should teach about something else or something different instead of this. But we're in a war. Why would we stop halfway through the war? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm here to challenge the troops. Come on. This is not over. Come on. It's not over. The skinny lady hasn't sung either yet. <laughs> yes. So... We don't want to be asleep during this time. If we don't fight now, we might not get to fight later when we wake up. And I'm not talking about taking guns and going hunting bad guys. I'm talking about in the spirit. But we need to speak also. We need to speak when we need to speak, to speak up for the truth. Instead of worrying about what people are going to say if we speak the truth. We don't want to be where we were back when Roe v. Wade was passed. The church was asleep during that time. We, didn't, we should have been going out and doing peaceful protests all over the place. I mean, the church should have been out there in thousands and thousands uh, when they passed this thing. But we didn't. We slept. When they took prayer out of school, what did we do? I heard Christians say, well, you don't want your children praying to Allah. Well, if I was in Saudi Arabia and send my kids to the school, I would expect them to be praying to Allah. If I spend my, send my children to schools here in the United States of America, I expect them to be praying through the name of Jesus Christ. Why should, I, why should they pray through Allah when we're a Christian nation, when we're here? And no, I don't want my, my kid praying to Allah or to Buddha or any other God except through the name, of, in the name of Jesus and lifting up Jehovah. But it's like, why should we be afraid that, and, and have our kid praying to some other God when we're a Christian nation? That's If they want to come here, then we're a Christian nation. I mean, this is stupid. You know, like the bill that I just heard that's it's up somewhere in Ohio that they're thinking of, or talking about is, I don't even get what it is, what it's about. Does anybody know what that dumb bill is? Something about they're talking about has to do with transgender or some type of thing like that. And I'm looking at, we're in the <laughs> H-E double hockey sticks. Uh, where have we gone that we're even talking? Why should that even be brought up? I mean, common sense tells you that, I mean, you're born how you're born. You know, I mean, it's like, yeah. Or come to, come, if you don't know who you are, come to Alina. She'll tell you. She'll check you out. 
I said, hey, dummy, <coughs> you've got this plumbing, that's who you are. <laughs> I'm just like, you can't make this stuff up. Well, it's the word of God. Uh, Yeah, that's, that's what this Bible says that we said amen to. I mean, it, it's just uh, crazy. But I want to go back to where uh, I stopped last time that I taught. I didn't really uh, kind of stop there. It was when the children of Israel came to the promised land. Remember they sent in the spies? Ten came back saying... Bad news and good news. Two came back saying good news. The good news was with the ten, the, it's exactly what God said it was. It was a promised land. It was land of milk and honey and all this stuff, and it's so wonderful and all this stuff. But they said, but there's bad guys there. There's giants there. There's giants there. There's a whole bunch of gyms there. Yeah. Jim said he remembers. I'm a little scared. Yeah. They, they say they infiltrate every church. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you guys all better leave. <laughs> <laughs> so they say giants, no way in the natural. And in the natural, they were right. But the problem with the way they were thinking was because they had already fought other battles. Right? Their very first battle was, was uh, Amalek. But when they held Moses' arms up and all this stuff. So in saying that we can't take these giants, they're saying that they, taught, they, they fought the other wars themselves. Yeah. Yeah. In the natural, they didn't see God as the one that w won the war for them. Amen. And it's easy for us to do that when we walk through things, think we did it on our own when actually God was there all the time, brought you through it. Then it's like, oh, now this one is too hard. What's too hard for God? There's nothing too hard for God. So it's like they had to be thinking that they did all the other stuff on their own. Yeah. Can we get there? But we don't want to. We got to see him as do fighting our battle. Mm -hmm. We just sang about that. He wants, he's to fight our battle. And we ate the song where this comes from is that... We'll, we eat giants for our bread. That's what Joshua and Caleb, that's the Joshua and Caleb spirit. Yeah. How many of us are Joshua and Caleb's in here right now? Yeah. Hallelujah. We're going to fight this thing. We're going to keep praying into this thing until it's done. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. But Joshua and Caleb, they were of a different spirit. And we need to be of a different spirit. The people believe the bad report. We will go back to Egypt. We're going to get us some leaders, and we're going to, they're going to take us back to, to Egypt, back to the slime pits, back to the slave free food, back to, back to Obama policies. The elites, again, will use us for our, their wars, which is what they did. We will believe the news media. It's all over. We will all learn how to speak Chinese. Back to slavery in the slime pits. God can't deliver us from these giants that are out there, right? The deep state, the media, the rhinos that are afraid to fight. It's easy to give up. It's easier to give up than to fight. We're back to our old song. Que sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be. No, we're warriors. We're brought in for such a time as this. We're the hit squad. future looks better than it does right now. <clears throat> Moses and Aaron, they heard all this stuff. These people crying out, they want to go back. Moses and Aaron, they saw all the miracles also. like They, they, they saw all the miracles, the ones that are crying now to go back. And we say, how, can it, how could they cry to go back after all the miracles that they saw? The miracles in Egypt, and then the miracles after they came out, and all this kind of stuff. But how can we go back when we saw all the miracles of our nation being founded? 
you read the, the forefathers, what they said, what they wrote, and all this stuff, and they, they said, basically, if you leave God, this is not going to work. And so we want to leave God so it doesn't work. No, we don't. We put our foot down again. Right? Shut up, God. Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before God. It's like, oy vey, what's going on? And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Japhonai, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. Now, I'm not going to rent my clothes yet, but it might come to that where we might have to rent our clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it, it is an exceedingly good land. This land that we have is a good land. Yeah. Our nation is a good, it, it's not perfect. But we can get it. We, we, we're going that direction. We got rid of slavery. We got rid of a whole lot of stuff or, you know, all this stuff. Now we're allowing lawlessness and, and don't even, people, kids running around don't even know who they are. Bringing confusion to our land. It's not what we were. It's not what we've been, where we've been. We want to be that again. It, is, it was a good land. And God is restoring, I believe, to bring this back to being a good land. He says, if the Lord delight in us, oh God, I pray that you would delight again in the United States. Just reset us up. The reset. Then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land that floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord. So he's, he's saying he, they're rebelling against the Lord by saying we can't go in and get this. Why? Because they're saying our God is too small to get us to go in there and kill these giants. We're saying our God is too small. He, he can't deliver us. I mean, they've already announced him as uh, Biden as president. That it's not going to stand. Yeah. The only bars he'll see is behind. Uh only rebel not against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Yeah. We're going to eat them up. They are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them. Amen. And the Lord is with us. Fear them not. We have the Lord, and we've got Sidney Powell. Yes. Amen. 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 You know what? I wouldn't be surprised she'd be a cherub angel with a flaming sword she's very tall. yeah she's like <laughs> six 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 eight or she's always that much taller and, and I was when I was putting this together it's like I'm thinking she's probably one of those cherubs you know the, the big cherubs you know that God has you can read about the different cherubs that he has and it's like she's up I mean it's like when she's standing there and, and when she talks to you she doesn't move her head either it's like she's just, she's honed in. I mean, I tell you what, I wouldn't want her on my case. I'd want her on my side. And the prophetic word is that these people are all going to go to jail, that there's going to be treason, that church charged with treason, and, and all this kind of stuff. And, that, and, and that's, why, that's why he couldn't just win outright in order to bring everything down. This isn't just this country. They're using it in other countries, and it's going to have ramifications everywhere if he brings this but I'm telling you there is a whole lot against him the, the deep state the rhinos the, there's the Republicans that are not it's like they said when they had the mass uh, there at a rally in DC there was not one Republican came out and talked to him yes just weren't quite that prolific, right? Not as many. But he left his two people that he uh, excised the demons out to do that. To, to evangelize. But, but there's going to be a, it's not just a Democrat thing. There's going to be Republicans going to jail too. I mean, when this thing comes down, it, it's coming down. Uh, it's, I'm not an R or a D necessarily. I mean, whatever, wherever's corruption, get it. We don't know why. Yes. Amen. But they were ready to fight. And I see Sydney as, whew, 
I've read different articles that people have written that have worked with her. They said they've never seen her like this before. I mean, usually what she says is the way it is, and she doesn't mince words and da-da-da. And they said they are convinced that she knows what she's doing and believes that she's got the goods on them. Because she, I mean, they're putting themselves out there. She's putting herself out there that if this thing goes kerflui, I mean, she was the youngest attorney general in uh, state attorney general, uh, I believe, up to now when she was young, that she was the youngest attorney. She's a smart cookie. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad God put her on our side, raised her up for such a time as this. She's a, De she's a Deborah. Yeah. She's a fighter. Absolutely. Hallelujah. And really now, did God specifically tell each of us that that Trump was going to win the election? Well, he didn't tell me specifically. I heard it through the I heard it I heard it through the prophets. How did these people that came to the promised land did God specifically tell them that they were to have the promised land? It was through Moses that told them that. So they didn't hear directly either. We didn't necessarily hear directly, but it's right in my, I feel it's right in my spirit that he's supposed to. God's not done with this man. So he keeps so he keeps going. It's not just it's not just my preference anymore even though it is my preference but this is good versus evil and we need and we need to and we need to stand up uh, but they received the word through someone they had to receive it by faith and their faith left them down when they saw the giant they said oh we can't do it and you listen to the news media and you listen to all these people it's real easy to start feeling the same way and it's like well uh, do I have the strength to fight? Yes, we do. <laughs> Woke Lori up back there. No, she wasn't sleeping. I'm just kidding. Yes, but it has to be through his strength. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They don't know the evil that's in them. Some of them. But I just pray they don't get the low-hanging fruit. I think they're going for the top. Thank you, Father. So as far as I know, I didn't hear directly from God, but I have through the prophets, and my spirit feels like he's not done with it. God is on the move. God is doing things uh, that we prayed for to happen for, for a while, and Trump will receive four more years. So I'm not going to tear my clothes at this point, but I will continue to speak and believe that God is not done with Trump and will declare four more years, even though sometimes it looks bleak. We are in a fight. We are in a war. Second Timothy 1, 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. So no matter what storms the enemy brings our way and how he wants to destroy America, now is the time to fight. Everything is being weighed in the balance. Remember, Sauraj said that there's balance scales here, whatever. Now is the time to fight on our knees in the closet, on, out in the street, wherever, uh, to speak to people, whatever. Is the remnant going to fight for what we believe, or do we get weary and give up? And I use that word remnant. Uh, I never really liked that word. Because it makes it sound like you're a super person and other Christians are not and da 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 and all this kind of stuff. But I'm starting to see a lot more of a divide in the body than I used to. I mean, for, you know, we have the guy that, woman thou art set free down in Atlanta, Georgia, that, that uh, said, y'all need to vote for Biden, brought Biden into his church. And I mean, and we've got a lot of pastors like that. And it's like when you see the platforms of what this belongs to and this belongs to, how can pastors do that? And then we have a Democrat pastor running against Loeffler in Georgia, one of the, uh, uh, for the Senate. And he's a black pastor that's, that's a, a Democrat, and he's going to be trying to get the, 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 to win so that they can control the Senate. They'd have to have both of them to control the Senate. But I believe we are fighting for our country. I feel like I feel like um, Trump wrapping up my 
my rally. <laughs> I believe we are fighting for our country. We are fighting for the Constitution and law and order. We are fighting for our families. We are fighting for our grandchildren. We are fighting for our very lives, the livelihood of, of people that follow us. Amen. We're always going to have that right. We might have our head chopped off for it, but we Philippians 3, 14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let the liberty bell of freedom ring again in the land. You are here for such a time as this. Make sure, make sure you're right with God. We don't know what's going to happen here, except we know that he's going to be reelected for four more years. Oh, it's the next one. I don't have it down. You got one more, Scott? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, which is the same thing Jesus, Jesus wrestled against. It's the same thing. And he said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Thank you, Father. So I'm stopping right there, and I want to open it up for anybody that wants to come up and let it stir it in your heart. You just. In worship, and I wrote it down. You see the wing up there? Check. Yeah, I don't know about that, but <clears throat> one of the things that the Lord showed me that he was doing right now in his church is he's fixing broken wings. For us in the church, that ability to be able to go into the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus has been damaged by the spirit, the, by, the, by literally the Antichrist, by literally the demonic powers. They do not, they want us to live on an earthly level and with a focus on the earth and not go before the, the throne of God so that we can see the things that are actually true and have good judgment upon the earth and execute his judgment. But the Lord is repairing in his church. He is repairing the inability to come before his throne that means that just as you say, we are coming back into a place by his spirit of holiness, of righteousness, of, of, of literally being one with him so that, we can op so that we can go there, be with him, one with him, understand exactly what he is doing and bring it back down to the earth and operate in a realm then that is superior in wisdom and knowledge than what this earth has so that we can demand the things that, that, are, that are being demanded in heaven. We are being reformed again. There is always with him a place of new beginning, new creation, and that is what he is doing again. In this... I could go on, but I, I'm going to stop there. Go. <laughs> he is, he is, there is trouble coming. This is a precursor to trouble that's coming. This spirit that has the United States of America, that is prevalent not only in the United, it is literally a, things that have captured the thoughts and the hearts of men and women, mankind. It's captured them. The, 
all, it, it, it is a God. What does God do? God is the source of all light and all revelation. There is an, there is a, so everything operates in that, ki in the kingdom principles that have been established by the only and true king. The Satan can never, the adversary can never change that into a different system, but he can manipulate the system that exists. When the enemy says that I will ascend and I will be like God, he will do everything like God does, to, but he'll bring, it towards a he'll bring it down a different path to a different end result. But he has to use all of the things that are set up according to God. <clears throat> you and I are conformed to a word. The word that's spoken, I have, to, I have to refer back to simplicity, otherwise I'll take this whole thing down a rabbit trail and it's not intended. We have been made to operate according to, to Genesis 2. He has made you and I from the beginning. He has made us good and very good. The command for our purpose in the earth was first of all, and he was speaking to me all this morning, uh, and, and, and Tricia then said the same thing that he said to me this morning. If we read what, our, what, what the Lord has, has said that we are all about, he made man and woman, and he said, be fruitful and multiply. And then, from that position of being fruitful and multiply, then have dominion over all of the earth. The Lord said to me this morning, if, if I stopped my scripture at that point, it's enough to do the job. Because what the Lord is putting correct now is the, the the cart can end up being in front of the horse. We can think that our job in that statement in Genesis 2 is to have dominion. That's the cart, the horse that gives us the place of being able to have dominion is intimacy with the Lord. When he is speaking about Adam and Eve, he's speaking metaphorically about Jesus and his bride. For the bride and him to have dominion upon the earth through the place first of total intimacy, of knowledge of him. You wrote today that what the Lord is about is the 17th chapter of John it's exactly dead on. It is where the Lord is taking us. We are coming into a place, just realistically, and what the scripture proclaims, we are coming into a place where, where people in John, I have, to, I have to refer back again to in simplicity. In the first chapter of the gospel of John, in the first paragraph, it, 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 it outlines, it says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and, and it's speaking of, of, of everything. And it says in the, in the, at the tail end of that first paragraph that's there, and the light came and the darkness did not understand it. It can be translated that, that and put into our situation that the light is coming and is here right now in the United States in our particular application, but the darkness was unable to receive it. It can be translated exactly that way. The, what we need to understand though, is the Lord is, who is light, who is the word. He right now in the church is re-revealing who he is so that intimacy can be reestablished in the church 
perspective. That's where all dominion's coming from. That's where we're going. We are going to the other side and we are establishing the dominion of God. We are, but we have, to, we have to come to the place where the presence is the priority. The presence of God has to be the priority. And that is what he's doing with the church. Those are the wings that he's fixing. We have played church, yeah. but we're about to become church. Yeah. This is extremely important because in the day of trouble, if we are not in the place of intimacy, we are not in the ark we will tend to judge how the things on the earth are affecting my life right now. If we are in him, if we are in the place of his presence, then the trouble can come and we'll know exactly where he is for us. And where we are, we will be unmoved and unshaken in the day of trouble. This is a, th this is a time of trouble right now that as you say wisely, if we are not engaged and put into him, this trouble shakes us to the core. This is our training ground. This is what the Lord is doing. When we are, when we are, when we are stated, be fruitful and multiply, it implies productivity, not just children, but it absolutely flows out of a place of intimacy where things can get pollinated from f with the, the husband and the wife. It is a place that speaks of be productive in your entirety of life, in your spirit, in your soul, in your physical in your physical domination it is a release of blessing for us to have control and dominate out of intimacy everything body soul and spirit where is the so again to sum up where the lord is taking us the lord is is is, is there are things on you and i if when, when we read appropriately so in Numbers 14, where we are asked to go into a place where the Lord is calling us, listen to me, this is vital. If we have any fear at all, know that that didn't come from you, that came from a spirit that you're attached to. He is, he is we are in a season right now where we have been given, we've been given authority that was represented by, by Jesus turning to Peter saying, I give you the keys to loose and bind, the keys of the kingdom. I give them to you. I want you to, you have spoken that I, I am God on earth. I am. You take that and you bind that to people's hearts. You take that and bind that to people's hearts. Release them from the next thing that's going to come out of your mouth that would stop that realization of the knowledge of God. You loose people from that spirit right there. This is where we are. So everything that the, I, you know, I, I don't know about y'all, but usually what happens is, is the Lord d does stuff with me and it echoes what he's doing with everybody. I'm not unique. But what he's doing with me is he's, he says to me, Tom, identify yourself. Now, if I ask everybody here the question, who are you? Well, okay, so, so you, can say, you can say that if, if you say, 
Who are you in the day of trouble? Who are you when you don't have enough money, when, when, when your bills are due? Who are you in every circumstance of life? Listen, when I take, when, when I have a thought that says that I am not capable, just like we talked about in, in chapter 14 of Numbers, I have no capability for this situation that I've come to. Those are spirits that the Lord is absolutely going after in this day and time. He is doing it to me. Every spirit that attached itself in my childhood that gives me an excuse that I've hidden under to not be productive. The Lord is actively coming after and casting those things out of me with me, with my voice, he's given me the power. He's waking me up to see, wait a minute. That doesn't line up with the word of God. That is a spirit that tells, that has told me and given me the name of that spirit. And now I identify that in my personality, that that's who I am. That is not my name. My name is is under the name of God with the name that he's given me. And that's conqueror, that's, that's fearless, that is, that is an overcomer. All of those things he's showing me right now, showing us right now. My identity has been given. Look, let me take this back to Genesis. He takes, he takes Adam and he puts him in the garden. And he, we have this thing that we read, we don't get it. He takes the animals before him. And the authority of Adam is given to him upon the earth by God. And God says, what do you say this is? We don't get that part of our authority. But here's how it works. So we're a little God under the authority of God operating upon the earth that what, that what we know the character of something is, we name that character, it becomes that. Listen, in the ancient world, if you knew the name of a spirit, you controlled the spirit. But if you were named by a spirit, it controlled you. We're in a place where we are waking up. Wait a minute. I, I, I don't accept this name that, that I would call myself. Where'd that come from? We are waking up to find out that those things that, that we have been named, we thought were a part of our personality. There are children who are born that, that have been named homosexual that think they are that, they don't know that it's a spirit. But it's much more subtle than that because we all, we're, we're all listening unless we are in the realm with God. We judge things for where we are in a pecking order of how we fit in upon the earth. And those names of where we fit in absolutely are being destroyed right now by the hand of the Lord. He is bringing us to where we are and showing us that we truly are his children and renaming us with his name. We then come into a place where we carry his true identity. We walk in his name. I said enough <clears throat> because it's a lot of food right there, but but everything that you've spoken here today, we have been told that we are weak and have no power in the political system. Those are spirits that try to put us in a place of hopelessness. Those things we are casting off and we are saying, no way, I do not, I break the binding of myself to that name that, that you've called me, and, and I bind myself to the name of God. Does this make sense? Yeah. 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 The 
the uh, what does the Constitution say? Or is it a Constitution? But it says uh, it's a government for the people, by the people, of the people, unless you're religious. That's how the church has looked at it. If you're a pastor or whatever, you're, you're not supposed to be political. That's a big lie from the enemy. We are supposed to be because we are the people of the, by the, the government is for the people, by the people, and of the people. And so we are the people. Amen. Whether you're a Christian or whether you're not a Christian, whether you're an atheist or whatever you are, you're still part of the people and you're part of the, the, the governing people. So don't, world, don't tell us that we should just go away and be quiet. Right. We're we, the people. we are also we the people. Amen. And we were the ones that were given dominion, Amen. not you. You're not in Christ. <laughs> so, so the main the, the thing that I, I want to get across, remember when I talked about uh, Second Chronicles? The word of the Lord came, and they all received it. They rejoiced, and they went out. I mean, they rejoiced it immediately before they saw it, and they went out, and God took the people. They came to the promised land. They had the word of the Lord also. They re decided not to use it, and they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And I don't want to wander in the wilderness for 40 years either. Maybe I'm just being selfish. I don't want it for my kids. I don't want it for my grandkids. I don't want it for my grandkids' grandkids. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't want that. But, but we are in a war, and until this war is finished, fought, uh, we need to keep fighting. There's no time to be weary now. We need to keep bringing it up, pray in the spirit, pray all day long as you're, as you're just going around. Whenever I think about it, uh, which is a lot, I try to just put up prayers and, you know, and petition him to do it. It doesn't mean that I got to be on my knees 24-7, but it means that I got to be, I think, in, in prayer during this time. This is a very, very uh, special time right now and a, and a time that, that we can go one way or the other. But God has decreed for us to go forward for the light to come. So we want to line up with him, and we don't want to be defeated, and we shall not be defeated. That's right. That's yes. Right. yes. You can come up here. Is it on? Uh, I want to add on what you, can I use your Bible? Can I use your Bible? Sure. All right. May I? I want to add on what Tom was saying, and I, and I, uh, I want to say this not as a, uh, a challenge or to take anybody to test, but to lay out what is before us. What is happening right now is a selection process that the Lord is doing, okay? And so the things that Tom is laying out, uh, I believe, are an opportunity to go to a closer level with the Lord. Amen. And so... To give you some parallels, uh, Moses was brought up. He had a royal bloodline, okay? He was descended from Jacob, and he was raised up in all the ways of the Egyptians. And he was exalted to all the way up to second in charge right under Pharaoh, okay? And we have a very similar thing that's happened with this man, President Trump, okay? He comes from royal bloodlines. His grandmother was involved in the Welsh revival. He carries around her Bible wherever he goes, and he's been exalted up in, into the highest offices of this land. Now, what has occurred here is that the Lord has given us a space of time where he's not here and we can't actively see exactly what he's doing. And so in that process, the Lord is seeing if he can trust us with very precious things. And so this is very similar to when Moses went up on the mountain and he was with the Lord in the presence of the Lord and the, and the Lord tarried and, and he and so it's in Exodus 32, if you're looking for it. It says, when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, they gathered, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what has become of him. So they're waiting for Moses to come down. And Moses is in the presence of the Lord. And he's getting, getting instruction from God on how people are to conduct their lives. And because of this waiting, 
There's a, there is a weeding out process of who God can trust with this and entrust with what is, what is going to be given is intercession. Okay? So the story goes on, and they build the calf, and a great number of the people go after the calf. And Moses comes down, and he, and he sees them. And in verse 25, he says, And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their, their shame among their enemies. Okay? Now, this goes right back to what he keeps talking about in Genesis, uh, where Adam and Eve were naked. They saw it, and they sought to clothe themselves. And this is exactly what they did by making their own gods. They were seeking to cover themselves. They were not entrusting and allowing the time to play out. And the Lord was waiting on them while they're waiting on him. And he's trying their hearts, which is exactly what's going on right now. And so then Moses stands in the gate of the camp and he says, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gather themselves together unto him. So the entire tribe of Levi now is given the place as priests before the Lord to minister on behalf of the rest of the people. What does Levi mean? It means joined. It means to be joined together, which is exactly what he's talking about, which is being able to be joined together. God can trust us with serious things because we are joined with him in a time of testing and trial. And now the next phase is that you get to stand in the middle of what God is going to do between him and the rest of this people. This is not for everybody in the body of Christ. This is a selection and a weeding out process that's occurring right now of higher levels and closeness to God to be able to be in his presence. They were in the presence of God on the mountain, waiting on him, and chose to go and make gods for themselves and cover themselves. And so this connects then to Isaiah 61, here where the Lord says that the Spirit of the Lord is upon him, okay? But he goes on, and, and, and it's talking about Jubilee. He's proclaiming the acceptable year of the Lord. But if you go down uh, to verse 4, it says, And they shall build the old wastes and raise up the former desolations. They shall be, called, they shall be the repair of the wastes. They shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and vine dressers. But you shall be named the priests of the Lord, and men shall call you the ministers of the Lord of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall you boast yourselves. For your shame you shall have double, for your confusion you shall rejoice in their, in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double, and everlasting joy shall be unto them. For I, the Lord, love judgment. Let me go down here. Verse 9, and their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people that see all that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. So what's happening right now, I'm going to have to give it back to Tom because he's over here bubbling over. What's happening right now is a selection process of who is going to willingly choose to join themselves with the Lord and cover themselves or allow the Lord to cover them versus seeking to cover themselves in this time of waiting and trial and testing. The Lord has won the victory. The Lord has already won this victory. He's already won this victory. We need not... To be, able to, to be in a place where we seek to cover ourselves and do it on our own. There's a thing the Lord's doing here, and we're better to sit and wait and be quiet and wait for instruction. He's in the waiting, lest we get hasty and tempted and run off and do something that he hasn't told us to do. So, so here to tie into that... Um, so you see there about the bridegroom that she's clothed herself? Go to Revelations 21. And this, is where we're, this is where we're going. This is what we are entering the third day. And I saw in Revelations 21, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth pa passed away and there is no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city in New Jerusalem 
You know the New Jerusalem is a person? It is the people of God. Coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men, and he shall dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be among them, and he shall wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall no longer be any death, there shall no longer be any mourning or crying or pain. The first things have passed away. And he who sits on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. We are being prepared as the bride. This is the choice that we're having right now. This is the choice that we have before us. Because we can stay naked or we can go into the Lord and be clothed in him. And that's the choice. That's what's before us right now. Hallelujah, I'm done. Pastor? We got to sundown before the boss comes. So this has been stirring here as well, as Tom shared, you know, I said that earlier, the prayer I sent out this morning, Genesis 128, and the dominion, the dominion, the dominion, was it Thursday night, Aaron, when we were, were trying to go to bed, and I, I clicked on Facebook, and I, um, I see this woman has this posted of this deliverance thing, well, and I just clicked on it. And the next thing we know, we have the phone laying on the counter, and we're standing here for about an hour and a half looking at this and getting delivered from, I was not expecting this. This was bedtime, yet this woman um, was an active, crazy, and incredible story of um, being in, in hardcore witchcraft, which led to crazy addiction, which led to, I mean, just an her name was um, um, Jenny Weaver, if, you, if you've not heard of her, incredible. Um, and the guy was Isaiah. So they're just going um, back and forth. And what, I, 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 what happened with Aaron and I as we're standing there, and we're realizing that we have been trying to cover ourselves that we have been trying to get it all right, that we have been trying to do this and do that and keep this feast correctly and do this Sabbath correctly and walk this way and not walk this way and wear this and not wear this and eat this and not eat this and oh, if I just get this all right and here I am and if I go like this and if I go like and this is okay and this is not okay and this name and this. <laughs> do you get it? And we were standing in the kitchen. The children were in the other room, thankfully, because we were, I've never, like this, okay, I've had this pain in my knee that has been going on for six months where I can't even squat down. And we are going through this, like, dry heaving kind of things. I've never gone, I mean, it, it was so repulsive because I was going back to, where I had been in this very pompous, this very arrogant, this air about me, and I know more than you, and I keep it this way, and I do it this way, and I say it that way, and I've got it all together. And I was going, I was, the Lord was taking me back to see where I was, and it was repulsive. It was absolutely repulsive. That is not seeking his presence. That is not seeking his face. That is me trying to get it all together and cover myself. And then he can't even get in. Because I've done built this wall around me thinking I can get it all together. I've done exalted my righteousness above his. My works are higher than his. The work of the cross is not enough. 
because I've got to get it together. I've exalted what I can do above what he has done. And we had to come out from under that dominion because that's not the dominion under which we are to walk. We are to be in his presence. I want that stuff removed, all of those layers that have been built between us and him. Call it a religious spirit. Well, the other thing she was saying was this witchcraft. And I don't remember exactly how she said it, but it struck a chord so deeply. When she, Cause I think, oh, and I'll think witchcraft, like, oh, they're out, you know, spells and casting and incantations and, you know, all of that stuff. But it was like, no, anything that exalts itself above the work of God in your doing is witchcraft. Man, I was doing witchcraft. I was doing witchcraft thinking, yes, it's pride and it's arrogance and thinking I've got this all together and I can walk like this and I can do this correctly. So do you guys want to pray? Do we want to pray? I don't know, Eric, if I, I you want to do this? Or you want to come up here with me? Like, I just, and I, you know, I, I have been that one who is like religious spirit. I don't have a religious spirit. Legalistic, come on. I don't know, but I feel like that's the direction it was going because we are to a bride that is to be in unity in, and in, in, in naked, like naked with him, vulnerable with him, open before him, transparent with him, his covering over us, dependent on him, absolutely not dependent upon my work. So I've been saying, Father, what does this look like? How do we do this? How do we, uh, how do we um, walk in this fullness with you? And, and we just started throwing off that religious stuff, but it was first me recognizing, dude, I've been religious. I've been legalistic. I've been trusting in my works. I've been putting the Jewish roots, the Hebraic roots. I've been putting the Messianic. I've been putting more... I'm sorry, guys. I'm not sorry. Father, I'm sorry to you for where I put my, and I'm declaring this and I am putting this out there because I fell short and I got into this mindset. If I just get it all right, and if I just do all of this right, like I'm going to be blessed. Does that make sense? Yes. Test. go live however we want to live and do whatever we want but that like has to come as just a natural flow like we just do that it's the second yes 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 so what 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 trish is describing and and we, what we're experiencing is is an encounter with the messiah and when he shows up, he challenges just by his presence all of these things that have been set up. Your head's bigger than mine, I think, Pastor. I got one of these small heads, a little peanut head up here. Um, there, I, I, I think I'm good. And so what you get the picture when the disciples are walking with him and they're walking by the temple, and they say, hey, look at this amazing building that our forefathers have built. Look at all of these things that we, look at the temple. Look at the beauty of the temple. And what's interesting about that is, is I'm not, you know, not necessarily that Herod was a bad guy, but that was Herod's temple. Herod was an Edomite who ruled under Rome's authority. And so, and they call it Herod's temple yeah. because Herod had done great, beautiful works to make this temple amazing. And it's not that those things were bad in and of themselves, but what they represented in the spirit, what they represented in the spirit. No, that way we can be free to. Let the Lord do what he wants to do. Yeah. What they represented in the spirit <laughs> is, am I good? Is, is that it was manned 
And this is exactly what Esau represented. Man's ability to do great things for God. And so when they present this beautiful building to him that was built by Herod, who was an Edomite, who was under Rome's authority, operating on, ha- on behalf of Rome's authority, he says, let me tell you something. I'm going to tear every single one of those stones down to the ground. Come on. Come on. Every single one of them. And this is what he's doing right now. Because when we have come into Hebraic roots or whatever, and it's not that we're not in favor of walking in the commandments or pursuing the commandments of God. We do affirm that that's absolutely the way we should live our lives. But when we put these things into the, the place where that is what we are pursuing, instead of literally they're walking with the real temple of God, saying, look at that amazing temple that we built. For you. He was the temple walking right next to them, and they're showing off for him. And he says, I'm going to tear every single one of those stones down, every single one of them. And so when we've come out of one religious spirit, we've exchanged one idol for another idol that just looked a little bit different and gave us a little bit different charge or feeling. And so we didn't recognize that we got off our knees in front of one idol and got down on our knees in front of another idol. And they didn't, they didn't recognize the same thing. So in order for him to straighten that out, he has to take it all the way down to the ground. And so not only, and this is what the Lord does in our lives, okay? He takes down idols in our lives. So not only did they make an idol out of that temple, we get to the point where they're literally making an idol out of him, the temple, and he says, hey, I'm going to die. And so he's going to tear that temple down to the ground to resurrect it. Because what's going to happen in every single one of our lives is that the Lord is going to be Lord of all, of everything that we're doing, everything that we're saying, everything that we're, we're operating in, every end is just simply the Lord because he's good enough. Amen. Right? Amen. So can we repent of that as a, as a congregation? Right? Father, forgive us for, for making idols out of everything that we do. We don't even know what we've made idols out of, Lord. But we humble ourselves before you and we just say that you are God. You are God. We repent of this. And now in in, in Jesus' name, we come against every one of these idols that are in these temples and we command you to leave the people right now. You get up and you start going, all of you idols, we don't need to name you. The Lord named them in the spirit. Lord Jesus, send your angels now and deliver the people. Deliver us. We break the curse of idolatry off of us. In Jesus' name, I renounce the curse of idolatry. Uh, I renounce all forms, all manners of idolatry, self-idolatry, idolatry of work. idolatry of things, idolatry of food, idolatry of clothing, idolatry of ministry and ministry talents, idolizing other people. Get moving now, you evil spirits. Leave this people now. You go in Jesus' name. Go in Jesus' name. Come on, go, go, go. Get up and move. Get up and move. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord is is cleansing a bride. He is, he is purifying a bride and he is taking off. Lord, forgive us for putting garments upon ourselves. Forgive us for clothing ourselves with fig leaves. Lord, forgive us for clothing ourselves with self-righteousness. Say, say with me, I renounce all self-righteousness. I renounce all feelings of righteousness because of my works. I declare these are lies. I exalt the Lord Jesus Christ that he might be just and the justifier of them which believe in Jesus. 
Now, in Jesus' name, I come against all of the sicknesses and the infirmities and the, all of the joint pains, the back pains, the knee pains, the heavy burdens that we have borne that we did not know we were carrying. Leave the people now in Jesus' name. Loose the people. Come out of the hands. Come out of the knees. Come out of the elbows. Come out of the lower backs. Come on, in Jesus' name. Come out of the hips. All the kundalini spirits, you false holy spirits, leave right now. Kundalini false fires, go right now in Jesus' name. All of these spirits that kindle their own fire, strange fire spirits, go in Jesus' name. We rebuke you. We rebuke you, Lord Jesus. Pour down fire upon these, these evil spirits, Lord Jesus. Bring fire upon them. Bring fire upon them in Jesus' name. Come on. Come on. We call out that spirit that says you you cannot go to God on your own, that you have to have someone to go to God for you, as in the golden calf, as in uh, the, the, the Catholicism, as in where the priest has taken that role, that you just go to the priest and the priest tells you what to do. That spirit that has taken away the masculinity and the headship of the men. We call out that spirit right now and say go, for what it has done to the bride, to the church, for how that spirit has come in. It's that, that spirit of, of that Moses is up on the mountain. We don't know what to do. We need this, this yeah. calf. This calf has to intercede for us. No, we call you out right now. Yes. We call that spirit out right now and say that you, Father, you have equipped mm. these children. They can hear you and they can have that intimacy with you just as Moses did. Each and every one of us, each and every one of us can have that intimacy. You desire that intimacy with each and every one of us. We call that golden calf spirit out right now in Jesus' name. You best stand down. Stand down. You are not welcome here. You are not welcome here. Any religious spirit that says you must do this in order to do that religious spirit, come on, come out. You're not welcome here either. We, you must stand down. Go, 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 go. go. We are here for intimacy with the Most High God. The Most High God, Jesus Christ, is our bridegroom, and we are intimate with him. We all have that power and that capability to stand in intimacy, to fall in intimacy, to be at his feet, to be at his feet. Anything hindering that intimacy must go in Jesus' name. We are covered by him, the shed blood of Jesus. Yes, yes. Now, we come against every single spirit of false humility, uh, false brokenness, false, uh, all of you lying spirits that give opportunity to not engage and not press into the Lord. We rebuke you and command you to leave right now. You liars that tell the people that you're broken, that you that they're broken, that they can't do anything, that the Lord has to do it all. Everything that restrains the people from, from pressing into the Lord. We don't even need to name you. You go now. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. These false humilities, these, these, these little prideful spirits that attach to your to the personalities you leave now leave the mind leave the will leave the emotions let's go let's go let's go let's go gonna let other people do do the thing that the lord has called you to do that's a lie we break that curse in jesus name and we loose you to do what it is yes. that god has called yes. you to do you we him. break the yes. chains off of your calling yes. we break the yes. chains and the ties and the fetters of iron yes. off of your purpose and off of yes. what, who the Lord has named you to yes. be. Yes. The false yes. names, we, we cast them out right yes. now. You leave the people. Let's yes. go, let's go, let's you go, let's go. You can hear from the Holy Spirit mm. clearly. You are fully capable to hear from the Holy Spirit. He speaks to you. You know his voice. You hear his voice. You can walk in it. He has gifted you. He has equipped you to do good works, which he prepared in advance for you to do. You will seek him every day for what you are to do each and every day. He has equipped you to hear anything that is hindering that is gone now in the name of Jesus Christ. He is sending a fresh anointing on you. The balm is pouring out on you. A fresh anointing of his spirit through this intimacy as these things are leaving, as this foggy vision is leading, as this clouded thinking, this, this clogged up thinking is leaving. Your ears are hearing. Your eyes are seeing. Your spirit is more discerning. You are more sensitive to hearing from the spirit and he is leading you. You are 
are a part of the body and you are needed. You are wanted. You are loved. You are cherished. You are adored. You are needed. You are absolutely imperative. Your purpose needs to be here. You are needed and wanted. We cannot live without, without our heart. We can't live without our blood and in our fingers and our hands. Everything has a part. Each of us has a part and we are all needed. Know that in these days you are part of an incredible army and he has put you here for such a time as this and he needs you to put your boots on. He needs you to put your helmet on. He needs you to put your, your shield on. He needs you to get those weapons of warfare. He needs you in this army. You will not back down. You will not bear down. You will not fall out he needs you he needs you to rise bride oh he loves you and he is so happy with you and he is so well pleased with you he has your picture right he loves you just as a daddy loves his child and says look what my child is doing you are doing that you are doing that walk in it walk in it and receive this balm receive this fresh anointing of the holy spirit okay receive we, it. we need to deal with we need to deal with these covenants that we make with spiritual Gibeonites. Okay? So, does everybody know what a Gibeonite is? When the children of Israel went into the land, the Gibeonites uh, dissembled themselves. They pretended to be somebody that they were not in order to be able to remain in the land. And so they put on some old ratty clothing, they humbled themselves, they brought old moldy bread, and they said, we've gone from a long journey, please let us stay in the land, make a covenant with us. And the children of Israel made a covenant with them, and it ended up being a snare to them, okay? So we're gonna deal with that, because this is what the devil does to us. He comes in and he presents something very soft, like, hey, just, just let's not deal with that right now. Yeah. Or Maybe that's somebody else's role, or just just let me stick around, okay? So all every evil spirit, and I'm speaking to you evil spirits who have attached yourselves to the people as a spiritual Gibeonite, we are coming against you right now. Now, Lord, I pray that you would send your warrior angels to put their swords upon these spiritual Gibeonites and tell them, you must go. Right now, each one of you, you must go. So say with me, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father forgive, me forgive me for making covenants, for making covenants with, spiritual with spiritual Gibeonites. Now, Lord, I'm asking you to speak to each person here and each person listening, and I ask you to speak to them the, who the spiritual Gibeonites are in their lives. Okay. Now, quietly to yourselves, the things that you have allowed to remain that you didn't think was a big deal that the Lord has convicted you about or put his finger upon in the past, Okay, these things become anchors that prevent us from being able to fully inherit the promises of God or the promised land. And so you, you have portions of the promised land. You get pieces of the promises, but you can't enjoy the land in its fullness because there's somebody there sitting upon your inheritance. Okay, now you know the thing that you have, you have made, a, made a covenant with that you've tried to control, or you've you put this dragon in a cage for a little while, and he, said, he allows himself to be put into a cage because he wants to stay in the house. All right? Now, say with me, Lord, I renounce these things. Now, you may not even feel, have the willpower to get rid of these things. Say with me, Lord, I'm willing to be willing. Lord, I'm willing to be willing. And I can't get rid of this thing without you. I can't get rid of this thing without you. So I give it to you. I give it to you. And I ask you to take it out of my life in your time. Take it out of my life. I offer this to you, Lord. I offer this to you. Okay. Now, you evil spirits who have made covenants with the people, we command you to go right now. Every single one of these covenants, we break them right now in Jesus' name. We break them. 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 All of the Gibeonites, all of you spiritual Gibeonites, you, you, have, put the, you have caused yourself to be hidden in the land and allow the people to put off for tomorrow what God has called you to do to li today. Get out of the land now. Yes. You go. You go. 
You go. You go. Now, we are releasing the people of God to step into their calling, to step into what the Lord has called you to do. Arise and shine, for the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Now is the time. The Lord is near. The Lord is here. The Lord will have his inheritance. He will have his bride. The Lord is flickering the lights. Yeah, all right. Well, praise, praise the Lord. Okay, now, say with me, go, you Gibeonites, go. Take a deep breath and force them out with your will. Force them out with the will. These insecurities, these things that hold you back, these things, these things that tie you down with your family members, that you can't speak the truth to your family members or your friends, that you can't give the good news to somebody that you ought to give it to, that you can't take a stand where you ought to take a stand. These things, this habit, this addiction, this lie, this fear, this torment, you go from the people right now in Jesus' name. Go, go, go. Go, go, come on, get moving. Come on, come on. You are not allowed here anymore. You are not allowed here. This is not your inheritance. The Lord's people is his inheritance. The Lord's people is, in his, is his inheritance, and we cast you out in Jesus' name. Do you want to you wanna close us up? Are you, you, we're good? Yes, Tom? I'd like to ask Pastor to, to put the name of the Lord on us by the blood of blessing. Okay. I should know it by heart, but I don't. Yeah, I, don't I think I could say it, but I don't trust my soul. Hallelujah. work in the people, oh God. And just fall on them, oh God. Let them experience you like never before. Shout out, Bakatiya Yamato. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord shall make his face shine upon you. The Lord shall be gracious unto you. The Lord shall lift up his countenance upon you, and he shall give you shalom. Peace. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Peace. Nothing missing, nothing lacking. Total wholeness. Destruction of the forces of chaos. Yeah. That's how you get peace. Sam.
same. Yeah. Is it okay if the ladies get around you and pray for you? Yeah. Okay, would you ladies get around her and just lift her up in prayer? Just bless her. Carry her burden. Thank you, Father. Bless her, Lord. Bless her, Father. Bless her, Father. Father, we just, we bless her for who she is. She is a daughter of yours. Oh, 
Bush and Sonny Bono and Paul Heyman and all that stuff. Bye. <laughs> 